let me tell you about the ways to practice Python. But before we will start, remember to subscribe our channel with the red button down there and to give us some thumbs up and to follow our social media. everyone! As I mentioned a few seconds before, today I'm going to tell you about ways to practice Python. So, it's more video for beginners, but we are continuing with Python and in a few minutes I will tell you about a few ways, what you need and how you can start practicing your Python skills. Let's start! Okay, so let's start with the 10 methods on how you can practice your Python skills. So first and the most important point is about choosing a proper environment, because if you don't have a setup, you're not able to practice it, right? So for the beginning, you should be fine with a regular Python 3 interpreter and packet manager or whatever operating system you use. Windows, Mac or Linux will do the job. Uh, you can even use Android with QPython, although its capabilities are limited compared to the original Python. After that, you need to or you can install Anaconda on Windows, Mac or Linux. And it contains a Python interpreter, Conda package, dependency and environment management system, as well as uh, some third party packages which may be useful. So I think that's a good idea to install it. What else you will need? So you will need an appropriate IDE, which is Integrated Development Environment. Many general purpose IDEs like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text, Atom are really great and they support Python. But you can also use something what's more like uh, developed to be used with Python. For example, the HCharm from JetBrains, it's paid actually. Or maybe you can use Spider. So it's also a convenient IDE for, for Python and it's included in Anaconda. Uh, there are also ePython, Jupyter, which are also great. So feel free to check them out. Also, I will place you the link to the article we've got on our blog about Python IDEs, so you can take a closer look and select something suitable for you. And also there's one more thing which can be really useful and it's linters. So you can think about installing uh, any Python linters to make sure that your code is written properly. There are Pulint or Pflakes, which are great and you can use them. Let's go to the second point, which says that we need a strong fundamentals to start practicing the knowledge. And this is not about Python only, because it's about every programming language. If you want to practice any of them, you should learn basics well, so you can build upon them. This means that you need to know at least basic syntax, understand main programming concept, get familiar with the building types and data structures and main features. In Python, you should pay specific attention to close, while and for loops, functions, integers, floats, strings, tuples, sets, lists, dictionaries, etc. Some other types like complex numbers, named tuples, frozen sets might be helpful as well, but you need, don't need to pay attention too much attention on that in the beginning. I think it would be a great idea to find some suitable Python book with really, really beginner knowledge or to get any tutorial to get started and to find out about all the basics. 
of course, you can take a look on our tutorial on Duomly, which is interactive and which covers all the basics which you need to start practicing Python. And of course, I will leave you the link in the description. Okay, point three. And here we are going to talk more about actual practicing, which is writing and improving your code. If there's anything would give you more value on learning than writing a code, a lot of code by yourself and looking for new solutions, finding what wrong you did that something doesn't work, finding the cause of the errors will teach you a lot. You should start with some code from books or tutorials, so you will be guided at the beginning. And then you can try to modify it, make it more general or suitable for some other purpose. Uh, after that, you may try to combine what you've learned into small but uh, meaningful programs. However, remember about one of the most important things about programming. It's not about typing, it's about thinking. So uh, retyping all the application or copy-paste development won't bring you the value. You need to think about the solution and try to combine it by yourself. Of course, you will make errors, but everybody does. And it's not bad because you can learn. You can learn a lot on your errors. But it's important to try to figure out what went wrong and how to fix those mistakes. Every time you get a fix, an error, you will become a slightly better programmer than you've been before, because you will know the solution for one more thing. Also, it can be really beneficial to get back to some old code which you've written in, in the past and try to improve it, rewrite it, make it in a better way. Besides that, it's a great idea to involve emotionally and try to find some problems you would like to solve for you because uh, emotional involvement usually improves the results. So try to define a small project that can help you with something and try to think of them and solve the problem. Let's go to the next point. So read the documentation. Documentation is like a tutorial for making an IKEA wardrobe. So it's, it's really, really crucial in programming. And also in Python, that's why you should make a habit of reading it often. Ideally, before you apply some existing function or method, you should check the corresponding documentation. Fortunately, Python built-in libraries and most popular third-party packages usually come with comprehensive documentation available on their websites and documents you can download. Uh, you can also get the documentation of Python entity like class, method, function using .doc attribute. In many cases, documentation might contain some more details about which you didn't know and you can discover some new opportunities connected to the function or the library you didn't know before. So you can learn as well. Point five, build upon the basics. Once you are okay with the basics, you can start expanding your knowledge. Don't worry, you're not going to forget the fundamentals. You will need them all the time, that's true. Uh, the topics like exception handling, packaging and unpackaging, arcs and quarks, function decorators, modules, packages, object-oriented programming, generators, they all are often used and should be well understood and heavily practiced. There are more advanced topics to cover like special methods, or asynchronous programming, or multi-threading, multi-processing, regular expressions, unit testing, and so on. It's likely that you are not going to need all of them at the beginning, so you can start with what seems useful for you, for your projects, and for the kind of work you would like to do. And for example, if you need some hardcore string manipulation, you can tackle regular expression or 
if you are working on some large scale scientific computing projects, you might find multiprocessing interesting. Everything depends on your needs. And right now, let's go to the point six, which is about catching advices, standards, tips and tricks. There are many Python specific features on the language and learning them isn't a trivial task. Luckily, there are some resources that sublime many of them. Uh, the official Python documentation is something which you should take a look at because it contains a lot of good practices, tips and tricks. Besides that, I hardly recommend you to take a look at Python blogs and read some articles about good practices and try to use them in your own code. Also try to use some tips from more experienced developer when you are writing your next Python application. Let's go to the point seven. It's about analyzing source code. Python is open source as well as most of the popular libraries of Python. And this means that you can access and read source code. It's often available on GitHub, but there are other places where you can find the source as well. Reading and understanding code for a library of interest enables better insight into its capabilities and implementation details. In addition, you can learn a lot by analyzing the source written by others, hopefully good developers. You can get your own ideas when you see their works, ways of implementation, and you can learn new patterns and tricks so it's totally worth to take a look at the other's code. Point number eight, get interested into libraries. Python comes with a lot of useful libraries for different purposes: Regular expressions, math, statistics, random number generation, unit testing, iterating, functional programming, multi-threading or multi-processing, defining abstract classes and many, many more. There are some very useful third-party libraries from many different fields of science and technology. Obviously, you can't learn how to use them all, but you can focus on a few of them that look interesting for your area of uh, the part of, of IT and Python development you would like to specialize in. So, if you want to be a data scientist or machine learning engineer, you will need to start with NumPy, which is a fundamental library for, for single and multi-dimensional arrays in an efficient and concise way. It's fast and it enables array operations without explicitly writing Python for loops. NumPy provides many functions to uh, manipulate arrays. It also has a limited number of routines for linear algebra statistics, random number generation, and more. Another library is SciPy, and it's a scientific computing library being built on top of NumPy. Uh, it contains additional routines for linear algebra and statistics, but also for optimization, interpolation, integration using specific functions. So, in case of going into machine learning and data science, you should take a look at this one as well. Another library is Pandas, and it's one of the most popular libraries generally in Python. It's also built on top of NumPy and works well with NumPy and SciPy. It enables working with labeled one and two dimensional data. Next library, very popular in Python, is Scikit-learn. It's a fundamental library for machine learning with many algorithms that share a consistent API. Uh, TensorFlow, Theno, PyTorch, Keras are used for artificial neural networks. Matplotlib and Bokeh are good options for data visualization. All these libraries have very good documentation and you can also learn about some of them in uh, our machine learning course, so I encourage you to take a look. Uh, from point of web development, if you would like to deal with this part of Python development, 
it would be a great idea to take a look at some web frameworks for backend. The most popular one is Django and it comes with the most required uh, parts included. It's very convenient for large web applications with usual requirements. The other one, very powerful and flexible as well, is Flask. And it's handy for micro... And it's a very handy micro framework with many extensions. Both Django and Flask are among the most popular web frameworks in general. Python also has other web frameworks like Pyramid, Bottle, Tornado and so on. It's also worth to take a look at SQL Alhemi, which is the package that enables working with databases in an object-oriented way. That one I tried and I think that's it's really cool, so you can take a look. Uh, also, if you would like to take a look at Flask, we have another video here on YouTube where you can create an API with Python, Flask and, if I'm not wrong, SQL Alhemi as well. well let's go to point nine. So another way of practicing and becoming better in Python is becoming a part of the community. And it works in uh, any language, programming language and any other skills probably as well. So as already mentioned, Python has a large, dedicated and friendly community. You can become a part of it, read posts, comments, ask questions, search for explanations, etc. And besides that, once you have a sufficient level of knowledge, you can start contributing either as a developer on open source project or as someone who writes interesting posts and tutorials. And this contribution is highly valued by the community and by many potential employees as well. So it can open you a lot of doors in your career. And the last point, learn a second programming language. Although Python is a general purpose programming language and it can handle many requirements and many different situations, it's always a great idea to learn another programming language. Why? Because thanks to this kind of approach, you are able to deepen your understanding of general programming paradigms and also it's easier for you when you understand one programming language to learn another. I think that if you decided to go into, for example, web development, JavaScript can be the language that you can benefit from very, very heavily. Besides that, languages like C, Rust, or maybe something newer like, like Golang or Julia can be something what you will find interesting. Well, at the end, I just wanted to remind you that we also created a video with list of projects that you can build to practice Python. And if you don't have any idea for the code you can build or the software you can build, I will link you the video in the comments below so you can take a look at our ideas and maybe create some of them. If you will do, please share it with us. We'll be very happy to see it. Thank you for watching. I hope all the tips were very, very useful for you and now you won't have any problem with starting practicing the new skills with Python that you learned. Let us know in the comments if that was useful and if you like videos like that and remember to subscribe our channel with that red button and also leave us some thumbs up. We really like it. I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye!